Are you confused about if-else statements in Java? I don't blame you, they can be tricky. But if you watch this video, I promise you, you won't be confused anymore and you'll have a fully working program using if-else statements. What's up, it's Alex back again. Um, hope you're all having a good, happy holiday. This is like my favorite Christmas sweater because it's got a derpy penguin on it. If you're new here on this channel, I make Java tutorials every week for you. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. Let's start off our if else statement program by making a new Java project. We'll call it if else hit finish and then open it up, right click source, make a new class and we'll call this uh, if else again, the first check mark and finish. Today, you and me are gonna make a program about grade. A user will enter a number grade from zero to 100 and will return back to them the letter grade for that number. We'll first ask the user for a grade between zero and 100. I made a video covering how to get input from a user. I'll link it on the card now if you wanna check that out. And to do that, Java wrote for us this thing called a scanner. So we type scanner, we name it, we'll just call it scan, and we'll set it equal to a keyword new scanner. This just says, hey Java, I heard you've got this thing called a scanner. I wanna make one and call it scan. To let it know that we're gonna make it, hover over it and click import scanner. And that'll bring in that code into our program. To get input from a user, we usually interact with this console here in Eclipse and that's called system.in. Now we'll prompt the user to enter a grade. So we'll print out to the screen using this handy bit of code that we use in every video. Um, we'll say enter a grade like that. Save it, run it and we see the code there or the text there. Now, if I type something, nothing will happen because we didn't actually use it. We set it up, but we didn't use it yet. To get an integer, which is a fancy name for a number, like a grade, we would store it as the integer. We'll just call it n, and we'll scan that input from the user. So we do scan dot next integer, just like that. And for proof of concept, We'll just print out n to see what it actually is. So we'll run it. We say enter a grade. I can type in here. I'll say like 90 and hit enter and that'll print back out 90. So we know that n is whatever you enter. But now we want to set up our cases. If it's 90 to 100, we give an A. If it's 80 to 90, we give a B and so on. So to set up those, I'm just going to make this bigger. To set up an if statement, it's really easy. You just type in the keyword if. You put some parentheses, and then after that, you put some curly braces. Now we'll say if our number n is greater than or equal to 90, and it's also less than or equal to 100, we can concatenate those two conditions by doing amp two ampersands like that. And I'll say, and it's less than or equal to 100, we will print out a. So if we save this and run it, and we enter something between 90 and 100, like 95, we'll get 95A. So it looks like if what's in these parentheses is true, then this code gets run. So anything that's true gets run. So this could be, I could just say true here, which is just a Boolean variable, which just means true or false. If we ran this and entered something not in the range, we'd still get A because this is true and this gets run. If this was false and we saved it and ran it, and even if we entered something in the range, we wouldn't get anything printed out because it's false. If and else if statements are mostly used for variables like this. So we're going to do what we did before. The next condition we'll do else if. So if you have multiple paths, you just tack on another else if. We'll say if it's greater than or equal to 80 and less than 90, B. So I'm just going to expand this. We will copy and paste this just to set up our other paths. If it's greater than or equal to 70 and less than 80, we will print out a C. And if it's between, I think, 65 and 70, then it's a D. And then our last condition, zero and less than 65, then it's an F. 
So if we save this and ran it, let's say we got an 81. Let's see what happens, we get a B. And I'll actually just delete this line printing what we entered because it's a little confusing. We'll say, um, let's try 68, we get a D. So based on these conditions, it determines what code gets run. And I'm going to space these out just because everything's a little cluttered together and it's kind of hard to understand. But let's try something a little different. Let's say we got a negative four for whatever reason. Nothing would happen because we're checking ranges between two numbers and we don't have any conditions for less than zero or greater than a hundred. So this would be an example of just using normal else. This is like anything else will be in here. The number you entered is not in the range. Okay, let's save that and run it. We'll try like, we'll try negative 12. Now we're interested in on the range. I'm just gonna quickly recap what we did. We're using Java code to get input from a user. It's called a scanner to do that. We prompt the user to enter a grade and then we get the grade they enter. If that grade's greater than or equal to 90 and less than 100, we print out A. If it's between 80 and 90, we know it's a B. Between 70 and 80, we know it's a C. Between 65 and 70, we know it's a D. And if it's between zero and 65, we do an F. But if it's anything else, tell them, hey, it's not actually in the range. It sort of gives you a taste of all three different kinds. So if, else if, and else statements. I hope it helped you out. I'm thinking of making a podcast programming terms for beginners. It would be sort of like an informal, hey, this is what this word means. There's no technical nonsense in the way of you understanding what a programming term means. If you think you would enjoy that, please let me know in the comments and that'll help encourage me to see if I should do it. If this video was helpful, please smash that like button and share it if you think it might help someone you know. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me and I appreciate that so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.